My dear viewers, have you ever seen a franchise start on home console and shift to handheld for a while? And shift to handheld exclusive for a while? You might have and not even have known it. The Valkyria Chronicles franchise started on the PS3, yet Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3 remain PSP exclusive. And even though it did return to consoles with Valkyria Revolution and Valkyria Chronicles 4, all of the games, aside from the original, had a handheld version. That is, until now. With the Nintendo Switch, the entire franchise is now available on handhelds. Originally released for the PlayStation 3, here is my review of Valkyria Chronicles for the Nintendo Switch. The Valkyria Chronicles series takes place in a 1930s alternate version of Europe called Europa. Do note that these are not connected to Valkyria Revolution. That game is in an alternate timeline. The story goes like this. All of the countries in Europa, save for one, are fighting over a magical substance called Ragnite. But when the neutral country of Gallia is found to have secret reserves of Ragnite, the big empire decides to invade. Now Valkyria Chronicles 1 is centered around Welkin Gunther, a small town nature lover who joins the militia and leads a squad after the empire invades and almost completely destroys his hometown. Together with his little sister and a local patrol officer, he leads a squad around the country aiming to drive the Empire away. Now despite the fact that this game has unique gameplay, the story has always been a big strong point of Valkyria Chronicles. All of the characters, even the more generic recruitable characters, have charisma, unique backstories, and the story just keeps you hooked even if you aren't a fan of strategy games. After all, they did make an anime adaptation of this game. When it comes to gameplay, Valkyria Chronicles is a strange mashup of a strategy RPG and a third-person shooter. In SRPG fashion, you move units around in turn-based combat, but in third-person shooter fashion, you have free roam throughout the 3D level, and you have aiming mechanics to use grenades and firearms against enemy units. To make this clear before I get started on the progression of gameplay, this is not Valkyria Chronicles Remastered from the PlayStation 4. Even though Remastered doesn't have any exclusive content, all of the balances and glitch fixes from Remastered are not here. This is a port of the original game from the PS3 with DLC included. Now the way you progress in this game is pretty simple. You don't have an overworld to explore. You go from a bunch of menus to missions, back to the menus for customization, and back to missions. As far as the menu is concerned, there are a few little cosmetic minor game modes where you can look up character backgrounds and do settings, but the main modes you're going to be going through are Book Mode, where you can see story events and do story missions, Headquarters, where you can do all your customization, and Skirmishes, where you can do optional battles if you need to grind. One thing this game has always impressed me with is the amount of depth and work they put into all of the recruitable characters. Even if a character doesn't have anything to do with the main story, every character has different personality quirks from their background and abilities that reflect those personality traits. You could have one character that doesn't like being alone, and if you put them in a section of the battlefield where they're by themselves, a negative ability called Lonely will activate reducing their stats. Although some of these abilities are negative, it's really interesting to see that much work into bringing out the charisma of all these characters. They're not just Unit A and Unit B, you actually learn about who they are. Another thing I like is how you level up characters and customize all of your units. Unlike other RPGs, you don't level up characters individually, you level up classes. When you allocate experience points to level up the scout class, every single scout you have levels up with it. So you don't have to go into skirmishes and grind for specific characters. When the class levels up, everyone levels up. But let's get out of the menus and get into gameplay, which is one of the strongest selling points of these games. As I said earlier, this is a strategy RPG that plays like a third person shooter. When you place your units and start the battle, everyone spawns in this big 3D arena full of obstacles, bases to take over, and sandbags where you can take cover. Everything is turn-based, but when a certain unit takes their turn, you can freely roam around the arena while using your action points, trying to get into a good position to start attacking enemy units. And that's when the shooting element starts to show up. When you go into attack mode, 
you pull out a rifle or a machine gun or a rocket launcher and you can freely move your aim around different body parts, different enemies, and it feels like you're playing a third person shooter. You also have difficulty in strategy like a shooter because if you're running around during your turn and you walk into an enemy's sights, they're gonna start shooting at you. So you've gotta get to where you get, need to go quickly or rethink where you're going entirely so you can have cover while you're attacking them. Though I will say that that part of the game is a little bit glitchy. When you're running around and getting shot at, when you go into attack mode, they're supposed to immediately stop shooting you and wait for you to do your move. Sometimes they do this, and other times, for an extra two or three or four seconds, they'll keep shooting at you. Which doesn't make it any easier, especially if you're using a scout with low defense. Those extra seconds of shooting could knock them out. Overall though, this system does work really well. There's a lot of difficulty and a lot of strategy here, but not enough to require a lot of grinding. You may need to grind here and there to up some levels during some of the bigger spikes, but most of the time, victory will be a matter of strategy and not a matter of numbers. Now let's talk content and length, which is really nice for this game. After all, Valkyria Chronicles is only $20 on the US eShop. And for that $20, you're gonna get at least 25 to 30 hours out of the main story campaign, plus some extra hours with the DLC campaigns that are built in. Now let's talk presentation. Overall, the Switch version looks way better than the blurry visuals of the PS3 version. It's not quite as crisp as the PS4 remaster, with a lot of the CG scenes having a little bit of a grain to them, but normal gameplay looks very crisp and very clear. The problems I have with performance are, one, the audio syncing, and two, some small frame drops. And what I mean by audio syncing is the fact that a lot of sound effects for the guns, be it shooting or reloading, aren't in sync with what's going on screen. You'll see the action for reloading, but you might not hear the sound effect for a couple seconds. Now, battery life. Being a 3D game and originally a PS3 game, I wasn't expecting a lot of battery time. But what do I know? Valkyria Chronicles has a battery range of 3 hours and 11 minutes on high settings, up to 4 hours and 12 minutes on low settings. This was quite a bit more than I was expecting. Now, in conclusion, Valkyria Chronicles remains a very unique blend of RPG, strategy, and third-person shooting. Although this not being the remaster does mean we're gonna get some more glitches than we would on the PlayStation 4, but if you're a fan of JRPGs or RPG shooters, it's a great little gem that finally brings the origin of the series to the handheld world. Reviews to Go rates Valkyria Chronicles for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviewstogo.com. Hey there guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Just want to remind everyone that if my Patreon campaign reaches at least $100 per month, I will remove any and all advertisements and monetization from this channel. That's at patreon.com slash reviews to go. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.